Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I was off on holiday last week skiing, so didn't do any updates. Uh, try and post a little video of skiing. There you have it. Nice snow we had. Good fun in Courchevel. Drove all the way down and uh, that worked really well. I have to say the French roads are absolutely immaculate. You come back to the UK and it's like going into a third world country. Hey ho. Anyway, guys, uh, update. The boiler's been running well. We had a bit of a problem last uh, week with it. Well, back end of the week when I was going. Um, and I'll just show you what was what was going on. Uh, this this bearing here, that's a new one that we had to put in, and it had pushed itself outwards. Um, we had a new bearing put on the other side of this boiler um, by Jonathan Contrico. Um, and what basically happened? We got new fire bricks as well. So those are old fire bricks. I think I showed you the other week that the fire bricks had, had broken down. A couple of them broken down. Those are now just spares. But we've got new fire bricks in, so they're not falling over anymore. They're sitting really comfortably around the grate. So when the grate moves, the fire bricks aren't moving and falling over, which is the problem before. So that's working well. Um, yours truly got some pallet wood in. So I thought, oh, you know, we're not, I'll just try and see if we can run it on that. But absolute nightmare, just loads and loads of metal in it. And I'll just, uh, I don't know if you can see down here, guys. These are all the bits of metal. That was the offending piece that actually, I think, rammed it and jammed it and pushed the auger out. Now, if I'd had a bigger boiler, it probably wouldn't have mattered too much. I you know, probably could have got away with that. Um, but these small boilers, 250 kilowatt, <coughs> excuse me, they're just really difficult. They don't particularly what the chip is we're feeding. So we're only going to feed really good chip. We're going to screen it all before it goes in. Um, so we don't have any issues at all. So that's all screen chip in there. Um, and um, yeah, we actually had, a, had to remove the water bowser here that the, that the initial guys have put in. They put a water bowser in and they said, oh no, this is a fire suppression system. Um, but if uh, it identifies that there is too much uh, heat in there, it will extinguish the fire basically. Uh, but when Jonathan Trico said he couldn't actually access some of the, of the uh, gauges and, and, and filters, and, um, not filters, sorry, um, sensors, which are down there. So we had to move the bowsers that the previous guys had put in. Um, so that's been done. Um, and yeah, we seem to be running all right now on this. It's, it's, it's doing its job. Uh, long may it last. The ash is coming out really nice and fine. No unburnt bits of chip. So that's really good. Um, but I'll show you what, what else is happening around the yard and we'll go from there. Okay. So, just show you what's going on. Still drying wood in the bins. I haven't decided to try and get the wood tech dryer going again. Uh, but I will do when I get a spare moment. Um, still got wooden stop, it's good. Not a great deal. Got a little bit of chip. We need to screen this for a customer. I'm actually sort of advising every customer just has screened loads um, now rather than uh, rather than having as chip so to speak because anybody's got a, a slightly fine boiler it's just problematic uh, with any shards um, we're sorting through all the last of the thin bits for the japper we're now on to sort of the knobbly bits which we're just sawing up uh, it's time consuming we don't get on very fast uh, but um, you know, it's just a way of trying to use up the final bits of wood. All of these on Bren's bench are just sort of knobbly bits that have been ignored, thrown to one side, and it's just sort of putting down. That's our dried heat there at uh, the last kiln. So we have not got much, much left there, but we've got a kiln change on Monday. It's been 
been good, yeah, it's been all right. But yeah, when I was away, uh, the phones went pretty crazy on firewood, um, and um, we just sort of, as you see, we're just completely flat out of stock. We've got a few orders sort of, um, uh, from another wholesaler once, once some, and our own customers are coming back again. I think everybody thought, the winter's over, we're now into spring, it's all gonna be tickety-boo, but uh, not to be, so um, that's good news. Nice to see it going out, extend the season a little bit longer. There's always that bite in March when the cold weather comes and shocks everybody. And then they, they, they think it's spring and don't buy the firewood. And something like, ah, oh, I need it. Same with all heating products, I think. Um, what's happening here, uh, down in the yard, um, the drying bin that we've got on behind the kiln, that's working very well. We're getting some, some wood chip out of that. Um, we're nicely into the barley here, and I'll just show you that. You can see that barley face is very different from the maize that's on top. It's actually making the whole face pretty unstable. Um, so it's collapsing a bit because it gives a cleaner cut on the barley than it does on the maize for some reason. Um, and we've just got a little bit of gestate on the clamp. People are starting to order that for gardens, so that's going quite well. Um, and other things like that, really. Um, so we've got Ash here later on today uh, from Red Kite. He's going to be looking at, at the lobes for the load pump, which is the back end of the tank, which sucks the slurry back to the front and mixes it with the maize. Um, so he's going to be coming in and having a look at that, probably be here 10, 11 or something. Um, and um, then we can get on with, with those other things. Hey guys, I'm just standing here next to the AD plant telehandler here. It's looking a bit sad with the boom out and uh, that on the floor. So I'll just show you what's going on there. So we had to take the middle ram that comes out of here out. Um, I just noticed the other night it was leaking a little bit of oil on the front headstock. Um, so it's actually got a, a, a crack in the, in the seal or something. Uh, the machine's done 8,000 hours. So it's getting on now um, for a 16 plate. And that's why I got that machine because that's got a lot less hours on it, 4,000. So I just thought to myself, and it's, you know, this one's here starting to make squeaking noises on the hydraulics. And I thought to myself, this is what we want. Um, slightly newer machine. So we got a standby basically. Um, so yeah, there we are. Here's the piston just here. And he's taking the outer casing a bit away to get it mended. So there we are. Just down at the biomass boiler, give you an update. That is running very well now. Uh, it's run all week. Um, and just looking at the heat meter, it's producing not max, massive amounts of heat. It's about 110 the last time I checked on this. Um, as I said, it's a 250 kilowatt boiler. So I don't know, can we, can we raise it up? I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of tweaking, see if we can get a little bit more power out of her. Um, the fan outside is running at half power basically so that sort of makes sense because the heat exchanger is a 250 heat exchanger and um you know that's running half power so that that all kind of figures in it'd be nice to get it running on full power uh, at the moment i've got two bins connected up uh just there don't know if you can just see the slightly steaming but it'd be quite nice so i've got space in that tunnel to stick another couple of ports or flanges on the end and get four bins in a line there and then we just change them once a week and that'd be quite nice and sweet really i think whereas at the moment we're having change those midweek and it's just disrupting the flow of the yard and everything so um yeah that's what we're thinking about there okay guys so i'm just down at this bin here uh, the kiln and the drying bin and what i'm finding is that with the fan pressure on it's that strong because it's blowing these doors open so i'm gonna try and capture all the heat so i'm putting sandbags down the bottom there I put a lock up the top there. I put some expanding foams into the corners, just up there, just to try and block up all the heat and save every bit of heat and push it into this container. Because when I was just drying logs, it didn't really matter if I was losing a lot of heat, you know, sort of venting out the edges of the kiln because it kind of got rid of the wet wood um, moisture. Uh, but now I'm trying to push it all into that. I've gone along the top there, so you see, and just sealed it all up. Um, We've got a hook, got that, just to sort of close that door. And then I've got this bolt, which I'm just putting in over the top, up there, 
so I can lock over the doors hopefully just try and just get another sort of five percent drying out I hope. So as we can see the doors are just slightly vibrating there. So kind of out there coming out these points. I almost want to have a kind of bar that touches the concrete and kind of rips back over here to push that shut again. Um, yeah. Put another sort of bar inside. Yeah, it is coming out all the way along. That's done a good job. That end. And uh, this has done a good job sealing up through here, which is pissing out air before. Okay, guys, so we had Ash here the other day. Um, he was doing the lobes at the back of the pump that take the slurry along this line here from the very back to this macerator here where it chops up and adds with uh, material from there and I'll just show you he's got the lobes he took out the old lobes so I'll show you a photo of those how damaged they were they were damaged apparently by bits of tarmac going through and uh, I think I told you the other day one of the, the loading shovels ripped up some tarmac on the clamp so that went through um, but we're now getting a decent flow rate I'll show you before and after on the flow As you can see before, we were sort of struggling around the twenties. Um, so new loaves have done it. Hopefully we won't get too much more tarmac coming up. And um, cause apparently it floats on the digestate. It's a bit lighter than stones. And it was this hole there that they ripped up quite a lot of tarmac. You think you've got it out, but it reappears in the silage. It disappears. Okay, so we're chipping up behind more slab wood and uh, Ray's just screening uh, more of the uh, chip that's gone through. I'll just show you what's coming out. Uh, it's definitely worthwhile screening now. Um, I don't know what it is with our chipper, but it just does do a few long slivers like that. Um, quite a chunky one there, that's quite a big piece. Um, so yeah, for clients we like to, um, I always offer them a screen service just to um, just to make sure if they've got a funny boiler. If they've got a decent boiler, it's not an issue at all. We can uh, we can obviously just send it straight out the door, but anybody with any funnies, I reckon it's a good thing to get things screened. So that's a, uh, to a customer. That's a little bit of screening. We've got more bins to change. So hopefully we're getting back on top of the wood chip, start filling up the shed again. Um, there's still a bit of a shortage of drying. It's interesting, really, this year. Um, so, yeah, there we are. It's quite a nice product now. All uniform and consistent. Okay, so we're just chipping up some of the dry, dusty bits out of the bottom of our bag. Just to make, there you go, you need to see how dusty it gets. All the kind of fines that come out of our um, trommel over there, so to speak, the bars. Uh, but it's just a nice way, blend it in with the heat, use it up, re-chip any long bits, etc. Okay, so just behind me, the lads are just going through all the screenings. They came out of the, uh, the oversize, putting the back through the machine, chucking it back in, chipping them up again.
guys, so I'm just here um, looking at a timber trailer crane, um, which could be very handy for us in the yard with the firewood and also when we're going to be taking down a bit more ash this year, uh, it would just give us a way of forwarding it back to the base. So we'll have a look and see what we think. You run it, that'll be good. Can you lower that down a bit? Just yeah. open it, shut, open and close it. Then just rotate it and grab it and stuff. You're saying this ring here is a bit. Yeah. Put it down again, would you? guys i think i'll get that trailer um with uh, hindsight i think it's a good one for us just be a nice little bit of kit that we can have in in the yard for moving and we've got this felling job coming up on the estate so that'll be all right um just back in the yard and i'll show you what's going on taddy's working on the telehandler and one of our bins has got a crack on it so they're welding that up yeah putting it back to place that was quite a quick mend Both the back wheels cracked slightly there, so they're just welding that back up. Not a big job, which is good to see, and um, yeah, that's all right. Okay, guys, so that's it for this week. We had a good week. Um, got more chipping to do next week, and we've got a new tractor coming next week. Well, not new, but new for me. And we've got a new trailer as well, so I'll show you that hopefully all next week. Um, hopefully working, so fingers crossed. <laughs>